you, Mr. Chairman. Secretary Miller, thank you to you and your team for being here today. I'd like to circle back and talk about supplemental spending, something that we've discussed previously, and uh, recognize you have significant challenges. Um, as was articulated by the chairman earlier, uh, we're seeing a decrease in the number of working age population here in the Commonwealth and an increase in the aging population. I was a little uh, upset when I realized I became part of that aging population. Um, and we also understand that you have significant challenges with the federal government's requirements um, under medical assistance. And you know, to have 257,000 people in the Commonwealth receiving benefits uh, under that program that don't need the benefits, but the federal government's requiring us to provide those benefits, that, that is a huge challenge. And, and I know that you have testified that uh, one of the reasons that the department needs supplemental appropriations is because you are an entitlement agency. You administer entitlement programs, meaning, of course, you must provide those services to people based on eligibility. And, and you have indicated that that makes it difficult to forecast future costs. And so my, my question is, does the department not do forecasts or analyses to help be able to determine those future demands for programs? You have actuaries, you, you look at all kinds of numbers. And, and I think that the reason that would be important is that if we can't predict this, how are we going to be able to appropriately appropriate dollars? And you know, the governor has asked for tax increases. How can we be sure that any tax increase, whether it's a personal income tax or any type of income tax or any other kind of tax, would address budgetary shortfalls if we can't accurately plan? So talk to me about your process and how you plan. Sure, so we, we definitely have actuaries that, that help us with predictions. I, I will say, if we're talking about our supplemental uh, request, I, I don't think it's accurate to say that the supplemental is the result of inaccurate forecasts as much as it's the result of just underfunding. So we came in with a request and said, here's how much we're going to need because this is the need we see. And when that gets chopped by kind of arbitrarily by $300 million, that's not really a forecasting issue as much as it is just we were underfunded. And so when that happens and historically that happens, that underfunding amount then just becomes part of the supplemental because again, as we talked about, the need doesn't go away. Um, and of course, as you mentioned with the pandemic, I, I don't think any forecasting, I don't know if people had crystal balls. I, I don't think our actuaries have crystal balls, but I don't think anyone could have predicted the pandemic and kind of what we've seen with keeping 257,000 people on, um, on our rolls that otherwise wouldn't be on. So I don't think forecasting is as, as a big a challenge for us as just kind of chronic underfunding. Well, you referenced $300 million being short going into the budget, yet you overspent almost a billion dollars. So clearly it's not just medical assistance, it's a lot of other things. And you know, you said earlier that um, there are significant, that there's a small population that's driving most of your spending. We're never gonna get the spending under control if we can't identify what's driving it. Um, for example, um, medical assistance. Now, I went through your budget. I continue to hear from nursing homes, long-term care facilities, that um, the state subsidy for medical assistance doesn't cover their expenses. We're struggling, and yet what I'm seeing in your budget is that there's a proposed increase in the minimum wage uh, but no increase in the state subsidy, 
there could be job losses. We could see an attendant decline in spaces at nursing homes and long-term care facilities that could drive costs in other directions. So how are you rectifying that and, and addressing that issue? Well, again, I mean, I think we hear the same complaints you do about from nursing facilities, personal care homes, that they need higher reimbursements. And, you know, as I mentioned in the House, I, I think it would be great if we were in a place where we could talk about additional investments into the system, because the, the fun part about these budget hearings for me is I get a lot of questions about why we're not spending more in a lot of different areas, but then also asked why our budget keeps continuing to grow. And these things are related, right? And so uh, you mentioned a billion dollars of overspend. I'm, I'm not exactly sure what you were referencing there. But again, if you look at our supplemental, it's nearly a billion dollars. And that is due to underfunding and due to additional individuals that we're carrying because we want that $2 billion of federal money. So again, I don't think it's an overspend issue. I think it's an underfunding issue. And we know the issue. It's kind of what I, I articulated at the beginning. We know we have more and more people who need our services. And I think we want to be there to provide those services. And I do hope at some point we can talk about additional investments in the system because I think it's important. But I think we've been struggling to make those investments simply because we're trying to address the need. And if we were going to make those investments within the budgets we've been allotted, we wouldn't be able, we can't do all of these things, right? So what we've tried to do is just make sure we're meeting the need because we have people who, again, are federally entitled to these services. We want to meet that need. We're not able within the budgets we've been given to do that and make other investments. Well, I, certainly I think it's going to require us to plan. So when those 257,000 people go off of Medicaid, it has to be incredibly challenging to do your job because uh, there are demographic changes that are occurring that are certainly out of your control, but I would certainly hope that you will lend your voice in encouraging pro-growth policies that will keep our children here, that will increase the number of young people who are working to support the aging population. I think you lending your voice to encourage those pro-growth policies will do more to rectify the challenge that you experience um, in your budgetary uh, climate there in the department more than anything else that you could do. So um, encouraging kids to stay here, growing jobs, growing the economy, reducing taxes, um, and, and encouraging that growth, that probably will solve our problems. I appreciate you being here today. I look forward to asking you some more questions this afternoon. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman.